Hello. My name is Dufio Boate. Well, I know a couple of women till date who never had kids or children in their marriages or their homes. But personally, my own mother struggled with that for many, many years. And so I think I qualified to say a miracle baby. Uh, yeah, my mother did struggle with that. So my mom um, told me time and time again about um, she, one of the episodes that was most challenging for her was going through fertility treatment for a decade. And she has a story where she says she used to go to this place outside Komase. And when she's going, she used to drive to the place and she would see a lot of women on the road. And the women told her that one day I'm going to have a kid. But after 10 years, the treatments never happened. But I think she never had a child. So she was distraught. She didn't think it was ever going to happen. So some years down the line, um, she traveled to Germany. And even in Germany, the doctors um, told her it wasn't going to be possible. But there I am talking, so I guess, <laughs> yeah, she was able to triumph over that. That is a very deep question for me because personally, I really believe in people choosing to have families out of this question. And I don't think anyone wants to hear me say this because I'm an only child. But technically, I think that it's very important for people to decide to want to be parents or even to marry because when you decide to go and marry, I always have this scenario that I build. I feel like it's like people are crossing to a river bank, okay, and you're traveling across the river. When you get to the river and you're on the canoe, you are going to paddle your canoe alone. So nobody should push you to do something you are not ready for, innately ready for. So I think it should be based on choice, you know, and not a cultural phenomenon. Absolutely. And my father tells a very funny story of how I came to be in according to him. So my name is Dufi, as I said, and according to him, he had a dream where his grandmother, who was very dear to his heart, um, appeared to him in a dream and said, Kofi, I'm giving you a gift. Um, give him something rather than a white, you know, cloth and manzanella, my mom was pregnant, so yes. <laughs> my father was quite supportive as well and had his own version of the story. <laughs> yes. I think it's very important for you to make sure that you are genetically, you know, medically fit if you choose to decide or you decide to have children. It's very important. So you should have you know, your, um, your visit to the gynecologist or you should make sure that you are healthy enough. But the decision to have a family or not should be based on you. But you should be aware and have knowledge of how healthy you are as a woman. I think that's very important. Huh. So if I'm married to a man who wants to have children, and let's say I do not want to have children, which I believe he wouldn't have in the first place, but at the end I feel like we need to have a very solid discussion. Because I think people, most people get married and start a family, but they are not ready to be a parent to another. Some people battle with childhood trauma. Some people are not even matured enough to be able to convey the principles of life to another person. So my husband, I'll, of course, I'll have a very constructive conversation with him, let him know the basis of my decision, and uh, with the hope that he comes around to understand that this is my decision, but marriage is above procreation. There's more to marriage than procreation. It is an institution, it's a partnership, it's a teamwork, so... You can survive as a family without necessarily having kids, if that's the case. Interestingly, the notion of giving birth and the notion of you have to give birth is almost culturally ingrained to. I think people feel entitled to point out to you that you are this age, you need to give birth, and so on and so forth. But people need to understand that giving birth it happens so often at times, we, we fail to see that it's not only a uh, natural happening, it's metaphysical, it is spiritual, it's, it's, it's divine. So let people be able to choose that path, choose that path, because their mother something to of their children, and that is you know, not right. And it's because terribly they fall into that situation. So people need to understand that once we, we have children coming in, we are raising a generation a people. And we want people that are like-minded, who are, you know, intelligent, smart, and whatsoever. So people should let people decide to bring for the people that we want as a community or as a society. Thank you very much.
Welcome. Hi. Amadwa, the, the inability to produce or bring forth. Hey, I love to speak, love me. I have, I have quite a followership, I must say. Um, I'm not plan, okay, I don't plan to, um, I don't plan not to either, but if it comes forth at the right time with the right circumstances, with the right person, why not? Okay, yeah, it's fine, it's fine, right? I mean, well, I'm, maybe I'm saying it's fine because I'm young and I don't know what to expect with having kids or not. But um, there's other ways to own kids too. So yeah, if I don't have some of my own and I want to have kids around, I'm still gonna adapt. Oh yeah, I'm discard. Well, I won't bring it up. I will not bring it up. But then if it pops up, why not? We'll talk about it. And I'm hoping that by the time we get to a point where we want to talk about kids. The relationship has well advanced, you know, each other. And so it will come up naturally. Then no one will feel, um, obligated to be pregnant for someone or get me pregnant or, you know, my parents are expecting that, you know, no one will feel that way. Yeah, if you want kids, if you, if you want to have kids, the, the question is, is he ready to have kids? Because you don't just want to have kids with your mouth and, you know, other places so you produce kids, but you should have kids with your finances, your emotions, your, um, psychological well-being. You should be ready to have kids. You should be ready to want to bring them up, nurture them, be there, support them, water them till they are ready to grow. You should be ready to have kids that will be responsible in the future. And should be ready to be responsible for kids. So if he is ready to bear the responsibility um, in all angles, why not? And if I'm ready, if I am ready as well, so that there's a balance. That's a beautiful strike here. You know, we have kids that are loved by mom, loved by dad. You know, both, that's two way watching. Yeah. I'm Daniel Nino, you know. Uh, I think you said disease of a male or a female, that um, mistakes them from giving birth. Very well, very well. I like the way they think and the way they, they act. They have a very different mind. Yes. Yeah. At least four. <laughs> Well, I'll find a way to have them either by adoption or maybe some other way. Yeah, of course. If she doesn't want to have children, then I don't think we can be together because they really, they really matter to me. Uh, no. But I think I've, I've seen one who lost a child. And since then, she hasn't had any. I think they, they, they don't really know that men also to be the reason because I think that's from me or something. I think the best way is to teach them diet and, uh, and stuff that will help them to um, how should I put it? take away like the disease that the best way is to teach them the best diet to cure infections or to take out infections. Hi, um, my name is Selassie, French La Selassie Yawa Amelbo. Um, infertility to me means um being unable to okay, either way um a woman being unable to birth a child or conceive or a male being unable to um impregnate or the the male semen being unable to fertilize the female egg to me that's infertility very well i love kids yes i can too <laughs> If I don't have kids, it's not a big deal. That is, he wants kids. But I don't want kids. If he doesn't want kids, he would have to give me reasons he doesn't want kids. If it makes sense, if it's something I can deal with, I mean, we reason together. You know, in especially in Africa, I don't know in other jurisdictions, but in Africa, childbearing means a lot to um, both families, the, the woman's family and the male's family, and most especially uh, the the man's family tend to uh, blame or stigmatize the woman in in the event that they are unable to have children. So if it's a thing he has discussed with his people and they know that at the end of the day, it's not me not being able to have children, but he that doesn't want to have children, it's fine. Yeah. 
I have. So <laughs> personally, this is my my life. Actually, I have to share with you. The woman that brought me up, it's not the woman that best me. Just when I was two and a half, she took over the responsibility of a mother and has been my mother till now. So that's who everybody knows as my mother. If I don't explain or if I don't have to, if I didn't have to give you explanations, you wouldn't know that she's my mother. And she's never had a child of her own. Truth of the matter is, except for people who actually knew her from Adam, if, if we've had to live in a strange land for some years, and for those people, for those set or group of people, they don't know our history and to them, I am her child. But people that knew us or know uh, no, uh, people who have known us from uh, where we lived or where we grew up, uh, to them, uh, she, she, there has been issues of uh, she, she's infertile. You know, people don't know the whole story, so they will say things that they feel like it is or what they feel is a truth, even though it's not. So there has been stories. Um, people call her names. Uh, people narrate a whole manner of stories that I can't share from, uh, they are, what they think it is, but which is not actually. I, I, I don't know how over a period as a people we've been educated, um, over, over a period to think that childbearing is the responsibility or for a child to come is a sole responsibility of a woman. I mean, it's a shame that we fail to appreciate the fact that it takes a month's semen to fertilize a woman's egg. So even if that uh, semen is unable to do the fertilization in the first place, no matter how fertilized a woman is, she cannot birth a child. It's not magic. It cannot happen. There has to be that fertilization. But then I think over a period, we think that by magic, a woman is the one that is supposed to, I don't know how they expect that the woman should conceive and birth a child. And I don't know how that um, negative stereotype came all about, but it's a shame. I don't know why. It's, it's really bad. In the, in the first place, I think we have to start the education from a point that it is not a must to have children. Some group of people or somebody or an individual or two people that call themselves couples can decide not to have children and it's fine for whatsoever reason. They might choose not to have children based on economic background, their economics, their finances, based on beliefs, based on their their duties or career, they feel they cannot have the time. Because raising a child is a whole lot. It's not just giving birth or um, bringing out children. It goes beyond that. Taking care of a child, bringing up a child to become responsible or a responsible person in society, it's a whole lot. I mean, the education has to start from that point. So when people think they are not ready or they are not up for that task, they have the liberty or freedom to decide that we don't want to have a child because we are not up for that task. It's not just bringing up a child. So let's start the education from there. And then we narrow it down to the fact that <laughs> it takes two to do this. It's neither the man nor the woman. It takes both of them. It is the, the semen of the man and then the edge of the woman to fertilize and then over a period. And even over that period, a lot can happen. A lot can happen that the, the, the pregnancy is affected, that a child might not happen. And even at the ninth, the, what, the ninth month or the ninth hour, a lot can happen that that child may not survive. There's a whole lot to this thing other than just bearing a child and I think our society needs we need to start the education right from the top from the very basis of it down and narrow it down to the fact that even at the ninth hour something can happen and a child will not come so it's 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 not 
um, fun at all to stigmatize people or to think that people who don't have children are infertile. It could be a decision not to have children. I, I don't know for, I'm a Christian. I'm, I'm Christian. I don't know for, um, other religions. But I think that even where I belong, we haven't done anything. We haven't done anything because right from the one that the marriage is being blessed, even there's an expectation of children. I think even uh, right from counseling, there should be that, there should be some sort of understanding if both couple in the first place want to have children. So that we don't even get to a point where it becomes a prayer topic, sort of, that they are not having children. So let's pray for them. If you don't understand the two people, what what uh, understanding they've had in, from the scribes even before they got into whatever they are into, you can't start to pray for them. Because what are you praying for in the first place? If they don't want it, what are you praying for? So that the, the church or some of our, our leaders make it seem like it's a must. It has to happen. So that if it doesn't happen, you become a prayer topic in church. You become the point of uh, preaching in church, which I find, excuse my language, very embarrassing in the first place. If you don't know what the people are into, there's no point for that. So first, right from the, the word go, right from... Um, um, counseling, there should be that understanding. You're most welcome. Hello, my name is Lillian. Kids, they are very, very important. Very, very important. For me, like this, I really love kids. Um, sometimes I adore them, I admire them. They are really like everything to me. Like, they are so like cute. When you see them, it's like all, oh, like, stuff like that. So, for kids, they are really important in, um, marriage and relationships and stuff. Um, Infertility um, is um, not being able to get pregnant in um, in a year time. Yes, I think when you are married or when you are not being able to get pregnant without unprotected sex and still not getting pregnant for a year, I think that's infertility for me. Yeah, I want to like I like um, blue eye kids. <laughs> um, um, me, I think it depends on my husband actually. But if I get like two or three, I'm okay. But if he wants um like five, six, I don't, I don't mind. Yeah, it's him. If he can take care of them, then I'm cool. Um, I think sometimes it depends on their um when they were in teen, growing up, how they were acting. Some people didn't live their kids' life. Some people. Uh, if everyone, it depends. Some people today say special access, Someone did this and that. So. For that one, it depends on the individual and how they, they grow up. You know, I don't have anyone related, but I've heard of people like, oh, this woman, they said to, but I don't really have one as a friend or, you know, yeah. Hi, my name is Samuel Kwabna Metza. For me, infertility refers to someone who have tried severally, but cannot have children. It happens in both men and women. So if a man is incapable of having children, um, that is what is termed infertility. And also a woman who finds it difficult getting to conceive a child, it's termed infertility. Yes, I'm married with three wonderful kids. Well, um, I would say my first child, came as a result of, um, in fact, I wasn't prepared to be a father then. It was, I, I didn't think that it was the right time for me to be a father yet, but it happened. Uh, my wife, who was then my fiancé, got pregnant, and we had our first child. Uh, yes, every man, not every man, majority of men who want to have kids, and I also had the wonderful prospect of having kids in the future. Even though that not around that time when uh, my, my first son was conceived. Okay. Yes, my senior brother is going through a similar situation. I'll be 49 in October 
and he's two years older than I am. So it means that he's 51. And quite recently, uh, there was an issue, all right? My mom passed away and we all met, the family met in a meeting and his wife came along. I don't know what triggered it, but the issue became a very big issue. So yes, I know how it is. I felt um, one way or the other, that kind of pressure. But I know my senior brother is going through a similar situation, so I know how it is. Coping, my brother is a very outgoing person. But there are times that when you sit down to talk to him, you can actually see that he's going through something. Mm -hmm. All right, his moods can change. Mm -hmm. uh, something that is not to cause anger, he'll get angry sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I've also realized that it's making him drink a little bit, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I know that he's going through a lot. Um, it's, I don't think it's a very good experience. Mm -hmm. <sighs> We are in Ghana. In Africa, if you don't have a child, it becomes a problem, right? Um, I've seen someone who is barren send another person's child, and the mother of that child came out to shout at that woman, go and have your own children, all right? So in Ghana, I haven't traveled outside Ghana, but I believe and know from movies we watch, especially in Nigerian movies, that yes, in our society, if you don't have kids, people mock you, they stereotype you, and oh, there goes that man who can have children. That man, he doesn't have kids, so. And uh, when it, it gets to that point, it really gets you. And some have even committed suicide because they don't have children. And it, it, it's, it's, it's all because society then begin to look at you in a particular way some uh, especially when it comes to the women oh she's had so many abortions that's why the kids are not coming and a whole lot of things and it's not a very good experience i believe um reproductive education to me i i, I don't claim to be an ex expert right i think it refers to um ways that can help couples going through that kind of situation to be able to have kids or to be able to cope with it until the right time when they have their own kids. One thing we should always remember is that all of us are not the same, right? There are people who definitely would not be able to have kids. It happens. And there are even people who don't want to have kids in the first place. We need to understand that um, if somebody's choice is not having kids, you don't have to put pressure on that person. And I think with such education, it will help people who are going through such pressures to cope with it. The reason is that, you know, in the process of um, pro um, procreation, it is the woman who carries the child that comes out of the two, um, what do you call it, the sperm and the woman's um, zygote that forms the kids. And it's the woman who carries it. So most of the times, people think that men are okay once he can have sex and release sperms. If the woman is not having kids, maybe it's, it's the woman's fault. And that is the reason. But I think that is a very warped conception. It's a misconception that we need to clear our minds of because women, a woman can be fertile. I gave you an instance, um, an example about my, my, my big brother. The wife has a kid. She had a baby, a child before she met my brother. So had it not been for the fact that she has had a child before, everyone would have been looking at her and saying that maybe she is the reason why my brother is not having kids. All right. So basically, it is because it's the woman who carries the child before giving birth. That's why people think that it's the woman who is at fault most of the time. But sometimes, men are the culprits. 
certain kind of jobs can cause that. Work, working around um, factories where there's so much heat can affect your reproductive system. Okay? Drivers who sit for longer periods of time can also be affected. Even the kind of panties and the boxes we wear can also cause these problems. And we need to know all of these things to be able to, to, to I mean, work it out to make sure that we prepare ourselves for reproduction. But if you don't have any knowledge about some of these things, people tend to think that the woman is at fault. I don't think so. Uh, it, it's only um, by medical and scientific uh, um, um, research that will let you know whether it's the fault of the man or the fault of the woman. Welcome. Okay. Not being able to give birth. Okay, me being infertile, I can actually adopt or take it like that. So we talk about it, you find other ways that can help, and then if we can't get any way or something, as I said, adopting to against that. So I think um, talking or discussing about it will help solve it. My auntie, I have, I have an auntie that she's actually not able to have a kid. Like what you see, sometimes she feels sad, and then you know, seeing others with their kids, playing, having time together. Just imagine yourself, you being alone and then seeing somebody else having fun. You know, you feel bad. And then you, you will actually wish you were in the ashes. So, not just all that. They, they sometimes make them feel so, so bad. Like, it's actually their fault. But I don't think it takes. All humans are not equal. So. Some are to be, some are to be vet and then others to are naughty. So we have to take them as they are because it's not their fault. It's nature. Yeah. My name is Jane Ketia. I think infertility is a condition or a state where um, either a man or a woman cannot produce kids children on their own naturally. Mm -hmm. One of the causes of infertility among women could be that um, medical conditions, hormonal imbalances, and other medical, I mean, medically related problems. Oh, coming from a medic, um, I mean, a health um, background, I constantly meet um, patients who share stories of some of these things, but it's kind of like a tricky um, thing to say that a woman is infertile, especially when medically it hasn't been confirmed. Because sometimes in our culture, if a woman can, uh, is not able to give birth, let's say two years or three years after marriage, they just kind of like, um, because of the stigma, the society just puts that that um, word like infertile on her. So coming from a medical point of view, I think we even who defines infertility at the end of the day. Yes. So um, yes, I've met people who think that they are infertile. Yes. I mean, it, it hasn't been medically confirmed, but because they've not been able to give birth after some period or after some years, they think that they are in set oh, yes, and I've met these people, and they share their stories, and it's very traumatic. It's crazy. I think it all has to do with society, um, concepts of childbearing, and a lot of times people think that because the woman is the carrier of a baby, automatically, if she is not being able to get that, it's her problem. But there are a lot of problems that come from the men. Male fertility is also on the rise. Like, male fertility is something that we hardly talk about. And, um, it's always tend to be the fault of the woman, unfortunately. 
So I think probably that has been one of the reasons why um, culturally or society-wise, they tend to blame women who are infertile in schools because they happen to be the child carriers. I think the education has to start from a point of, first of all, ruling out that um, specific gender uh, bias, like, Starting from the point that infertility is not something that is only related to women. It has to be both for both gender or both sexes. So the education must first um, start from that point where once you are talking about infertility, you are not just tackling infertility among women, but you are tackling infertility among men and women in general at the same time. I think that is one of the things that could could start a campaign around that, like starting from that point of view. And also debunking all the traditional and cultural um, myths surrounding infertility. Like you have to also start there. Like there has to be um, education. You have to go to these villages and because most of the time they are the people that are still, those are the people that still hold on to the old mentality and superstition and all that. The education must also go to those places. Like they need to understand that infertility is not something that is superstitious. Like it, it, it's more of a medical something. Yeah. So the education must also contain some of these things. Yeah. Yes, I would love to. <laughs> I'm okay. Like it's one of those things that I often think about because hey, me, sometimes you you have plans about something, but it's it's not as it, it, things might not go as you want. And probably because I'm privileged to be in the medical field, I know some of these things. If I don't, if I, for whatever reasons, I can't have children of my own. There are many ways to, to have kids. Surrogacy is the IVF is the, if all these things fail, I can always adopt. So I'm very open to having my own kids or not having my own kids. Um, I'm game. Yeah. Okay. That is kind of a very, <laughs> Yeah, hard question to answer. If he doesn't want kids and I want kids, I think there's always going to be a piece of compromise because I truly love kids. And if he doesn't want kids, I don't know, but I don't know what I'm going to do, but I think it's just going to be one hard something. Maybe you can always come to a place of compromise. I always say I want to have four kids. So if I meet somebody who doesn't want to have kids at all, we can always strike an even two will do. <laughs> yeah. I guess. I think they should first start by seeking medical help. As most of the times, patients do come or clients do come to the hospital and by the time they get to the hospital, they tried a lot of things. Prayer comes, like drugs and on their own. I'm not saying that um, prayers and all those things are bad. I mean, I'm, I'm a Christian and I, I believe in that power of God helping people to get that. We had uh, testimonies of I personally scanned a woman who hadn't had a child for 17 years. And the day I stand here and she had the heartbeat of the baby, she was so, so, so happy. Yes, I believe in all that thing. But I also believe that couples must start um, their fertility journey. I think it's something that should even be incorporated after marriage. Like, you shouldn't wait to see that you, the kids are not coming before you start all these things. I think after, before marriage, you could do, there are so many tests that you could do. A woman could do ultrasound or hormonal tests. A man could just do, um, semen analysis and all those things. I'm not saying that these things will automatically review everything, but at least it, it has to start from somewhere. So my, my, um, my advice is that people who are planning to have kids, they should always see their gynae. Women should continually see their gynae. They must visit the hospital frequently to get to know what is actually going on in their body and seek um, fertility journey together. And to say that fertility is not something that is gender, one specific gender related. So if couple want to pursue fertility journey, both of them must go to the hospital at the same time. It's not like the woman will go and then after everything, they might know they both must see a GP and then they will take the journey from there. Yeah. Thank you for coming. It's my pleasure. Pastor Bidi Lizia Kabanga. Pastor Manya 45. In fact, you are in a man, uh, Mr. Nima, if you call Kakra. If 
because before me worry no dey na me need me that so say me ko worry na me wo me me say me do ya me wo because me sorry na nya sa be ma no na yan pa o break me na me no bi o ho dada ti o ho no me nyi hen ye be ye for months no ka be bi ti e no no de nya no o nya me me kunu ba te ye 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 friendship nti e ye sa no me ko ware ye no nji mi se bi enema bi be ye ba sa because e sa sa ye eh before be ka be bi no kra no o ya re nya na mai ba sa nti o wu ye no na ma ma ni je nti mi ti wu se enu na ma na che ye o se den ye o ti me ware ye no i think eh na mi ni se ra de nya ko pon ye aduma me wu nti ma ji ni ho se me wu ba ti wu sa de no ko wa ye sa ta no so na be ma no so aye na ji so o ko sku ti e encourage me se me nya no tenta me bia me nyim na o kwa na me ho atom afi ba na nya e den e ma ti mi ko ga na college sa ta no na doctor bi wo bo ga e friend doctor julius ono na me call him say ono kura mpo no e ki van doctor enti o share me o ma me ko ye scan e me nya ma nya ma be bi bai no so madam banga eh o problem no ndo so bia na glow o tube na ma but e se mi hu ku ti mi ko ka se mi ku mi se o se ye ko ye ni ma ni ma bi ni mfa ni ma bi mla ti o ho ana ja ye ko ye ko ye na in fact na be ma na ni da fo en ti ye sa no eh e ma no eduro en ye ma me so so eduro na school na asem ba ye na o de ko school so the co school no me dey say me nim say dey bia me kwa kwa dey dey ti me nim say say dey man wo ho ti wo man na julius no hu say dey na e chiko e no bi sam ta na den adam banga ma tritu wa wo no mo mba yin na ma hu say nyame adu na den wo kunu wo hin na em say on ko pe so say hu no dio en ti wo ho na me ka say say me kunu co school no say ah what adan na me ba treatment dey bia na me ntimi en kantre ne se mi kunu ni ho mi kiki wi dat be ma de a nya de a me wo be ma yin si ne wo tu ti ka te se me kon en ten ni wo mu a na ma pepe na ma sheda se de be ya me ne be ma be ya na ma kon us mi ko ho be e twice mi kon en ten twice ne de ka ho tre no on se sa ne ma we se de kura ti e ba se mi ko du en kran no na em to ne ma mi bi ye ne ma bi ana mi bi e bu fu na ye ye akata kata dey try dey share you no send come kwa me kan chere no no ma kan chere ni bi e nyina ya dey abufu na na mu ama ma san afu me tie dem aba you want to to an school to sa ye ye na ya ma ya transfer court na fa ko the court na fa ko no wa woni sabi o mpa mo cha me ma mo boto mo ye kitu e bi kakra na che che dey e wo ho nra no ene de ene de e no na mo kai ti na da je ni ho awo de ma me o Enti sa me ko ba bi kura na se ya dia ma je edura ba na ye me ne ne mi enu ne be dia o se di wa de na me sori a mpa e bo bia na me ko pastes e bi kura pastes bi won se ye ya ma mere no ye nku sa se fo na nka sa wo ware na wo kunu ye wo ade a wo ko bo ko 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 mpo no nya ntia na ntie na eh wo fi wo kunu na chi ye fere no se wo ko bo na nsa eh eh o fi wu kun na chi ada wu ana be ma ne na be wu because o fi e bia ne na se wu o ma so so a o ma no bo se wu o ba fi e ho e bia kura mpo e be tme se wu nti na fi e ho ni nua eh ni kunu nua ketoa ana se de bibi ana na papa na de e fi e ho bibi ye ibi mu o di kura nti ni wo fi e ho na o mu wu na ye e si na wo ko fa ba ye na nti a nti o tme ko pa so di se o se hun ma me bom pa yo enna na me ka asem we ya chre na me nyankofo ma no hu se eh wa nhwe yi a wo de hu ba ma me ma ba sa ke ne ne ye chie no ne ye nte sa bi nti e be ma wa jin se e ma me ajin se a ba na me ne e sima si ye ni bi e na ma ware no ya we sita ma 13 years mu a e ne ma se e sisi bi e 